So today we're talking about junior developers being stuck in tutorial hell. I was stuck in tutorial hell. I think a lot of other people just get stuck in these infinite Udemy loops and treehouse loops and whatever it is when you're trying to learn code. You don't actually know what you're doing and, and there's a lot of courses in there and you're like, when would I ever use this? When I look at jobs, the job title is web developer, not console.log and your Chrome developer tools developer. Like, when do you actually use this stuff? And so you follow along and you do these tutorials and then you get to the end and you finish the little Udemy course, you start applying the jobs and then you get your first code test and you have no idea, no idea what to do. You don't have, you don't know how to build anything from scratch at all. If you're wondering like, okay, well, if I'm not doing tutorials, you know, how am I supposed to learn? Or I, I can't go to boot camp, or I'm not going to college. Okay, well, let me just say that it doesn't matter which medium you pick to learn, we're all self-taught. Okay, so let me just get that out of the way real quick. We're all self-taught. If you're going to college, you're self-taught. I'm sure you guys have all seen the professor that walks in to the room, writes some shit on the whiteboard, and then walks out, and he's like, here you go. And you're like, but aren't you gonna teach anything? He's like, oh yeah, by the way, the pages 161 to 169 in your homework, uh, everything is due, and I'm grading for accuracy. And you're like, I paid how much? To do this, college is basically self-taught. If you go to a co-boot camp, they're gonna give you projects, you're gonna have a mentor, you're gonna have other students to like come and talk to, but you're still gonna struggle through that self-taught there. And then obviously if you're doing Udemy or Treehouse or whatever other online courses that you're doing, you're self-taught, okay? So it doesn't, it's not just strictly doing tutorials that, that keeps you in this like little limbo area. Basically how you learn is through the struggle, not by like following along to these tutorials and these projects and then getting to the end. So what I would recommend when you get to the end of these projects that you're doing, take a minute, stop, ask yourself, wait, why, why am I, why am I doing this again? What did I actually build? And then try to break it. If you don't want to try and break it, try and modify what you did at least. Start asking yourself the question like, what if I did this? What if I changed this one thing? Or what would happen if I unhooked this? From this would it still work like this is how you start to figure things out how, how you when you take a second and you just break it apart whatever it is you just built like even if you don't know what you're doing most of the time and you're just kind of following along you're like okay well he typed that so i'm gonna type that and he pasted this there so i guess i'll do that 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 makes sense and you tell yourself that it makes sense and then you get to the job interview and you know that you have no idea what you just did you there's no way you could recreate what you just did by following along. So when you get to the end of the tutorial, you gotta be like, okay, how do I break this? Or what happens if I unhook this? Or what happens if, what happens if? That's what, that's how I make progress. What happens if I did this? Or it would be cool if, and then I try to build that thing into whatever the end project was. You're gonna break a bunch of stuff. You're gonna fix it. You're gonna go on Stack Overflow. You're gonna get frustrated by the answers there, not find the answer you want, try a bunch of stuff, and you'll probably be you know, actually like, you know, a line or two of code away from fixing it, but you'll never know that. And you'll get frustrated and you'll stop. And that's part of the learning process. But what no one's telling you is that literally everyone goes through this process. You and everyone else watching this video is like, this isn't for me, this is really difficult. I should be able to make this from scratch after studying code for three hours a day. For two weeks, I should be able to build anything I want from scratch. And that is not true at all. You should not be able to do that. And if you, um, I'm sure there's some people watching that are like, well, actually, I, I, I could build things from scratch myself. Um, uh, it only took me two days of learning because I'm a genius. Okay, well, good for you, dude. But for the majority of us out there, it's not like that at all. Like, we could study, like, it took me like six months before I had any idea how to create, like, this little simple app that I've made 16 times in Udemy. But to do it from scratch, building it actually from scratch, and have an idea like without having to pull up Stack Overflow every two seconds and copy paste code, that took a long time. Sitting in Chrome Developer Tools is an important skill to have and, and knowing when to use it and how to use it is more important. You need to ask yourself, why am I using this? When, when would I do this? What project would I be making? Or what bug would cause me to have to pull this up and be like, okay, why? Okay, there's a developer tool thing, and if I put a debugger in here, then I can look and I can see where the code stops and I can see where it breaks, and so I should probably use it for that reason. But in a lot of these courses, you end up just going through these arbitrary courses, and it's like, okay, we're doing functions. Now we're doing recursion. And now we're doing constructors and prototypes. And you, But they, they don't really tell you when or what case to use them, so you just get stuck in all this theory of, I don't know why this has to do anything with like web development, because when I look at the jobs, it doesn't say anything about this. And so that's kind of like one of the main issues with these tutorials. And they give you projects so that you learn all these skills and then you build a project. And that doesn't mean, like following along, being a monkey see, monkey do, doesn't mean you're monkey see, monkey no kind of deal. I just made that up on spot, that was pretty good. So you gotta be practical in everything that you do with these tutorials. Maybe even ask yourself the question, could I build this another way? Why is he using this tech stack to build this? Why is he using this language to build this? Would it be easier if we did it this way? Or like, we don't need to make an entire Angular application 
to make a view page. You know, like you gotta ask yourself why you're doing the things that you're doing in the tutorial. What if I did it a different way? And that right there, it starts the process of like, okay, let me pause this. And you might have to go learn something that you've never done before. That might even be more unfamiliar than what you're feeling right now of not having any idea of what to do. Yeah, well, go do it again. Go do it again with another language and go do it again with another language. Because if you learn JavaScript and then you go learn Python, something in Python might click. Whereas in JavaScript, you're like, I have no idea. Am I dumb? Like, I think someone dropped me on my head as a kid. Like, but then you go do it in Python, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Why didn't, got it. So you gotta learn different languages for similar concepts. And, and I'm betting you that it will make sense in one language, but the other language would be like, what? Wait, hold on. So it could be the syntax. It could be the verbiage. It could be any, any number of things that causes one language to not make sense and another language to make sense. If I had to like personally recommend one of the best ways to learn is to just build things that you want that don't exist. Like be like, I've always wanted to make an app that does this, but I have no idea what to do. And so a lot of people, they start there. I want to build this app and I don't really know what to do. How do I do it? Well, I don't know how to code. So then you go look up Udemy courses on learning how to code, but then you get stuck and you're like, I'm never going to get to the point where I can like make this. I get that it can be kind of easy to want to just start looking up how to code so that you can build this thing, but I'd say a lot more often when you start going through these like classic traditional routes of like tutorials and building projects, you're just gonna get lost and be like, yeah, well, this isn't for me. Well, what they didn't tell you is that like, most of this stuff you probably didn't need to build your app. And what they didn't tell you is there's probably an app out there that's super similar, if not identical to what you wanna make. So go find that break it apart, look inside the code, look at the terms it's using, look at the syntax it's using, and then figure out what that stuff is doing. And then go down those branches, like start, like if it's using an array and you don't know what an array is, like, oh, what is this box of numbers? And then you put in this box of numbers and then it'll be like an array. And then you'll be like, oh, what's an array? And then you can go down that path of how all these different, you know, you got collections and dictionaries and associative arrays and PHP and then like that's find something that's kind of close to what you want and and then and then go backwards like work backwards that's how I learn I find something that's complete way over my head and then I work backwards and I debug the little pieces because I know this is the stuff that I'm gonna have to use to build the app that I want because this is pretty close already I'm not gonna start from like the bare bones minimum learning all this unrelated stuff that I don't need it doesn't make any sense to spend all this time on that's just gonna demotivate me because I'm gonna be asking myself the question when am I gonna use this yeah 30 years ago you probably couldn't do that but this is 2019 and we have the internet and chances are if you have if you have an idea someone else has probably had that idea before and you could probably find something really close that's I mean that's my pro tip for the video another question that I get all the time is like what four projects should I put on my resume and like it's not there is no four projects that everyone should put on their resume. Number one, because if I told you four projects to put on your resume, everyone that watched the video would be like, okay, I'm gonna do those exact four, and then they would get saturated. Well, I don't know, I'd have to have like millions of subscribers, but if I told everyone to do one thing, everyone would do that one thing, and there'd be no uniqueness in it, and everyone would just do it because that's what jobs want, right? No, it's not about what you make, it's about how you make it, and your ability to defend that in the interview and explain it in the interview. They're gonna find out everything you know with a code test. So build things that you want. Don't build things that just look good and function and you're like, oh, well, this will get me to the interview, right? Okay, cool, yeah, it'll get you to the interview. Then they're gonna hit you with that code test and you're gonna have no idea what to do. So build things that you want and focus on how you're building it and what you're building it with, not the actual like end product, the end goal. You don't have to build like a brand new Facebook from scratch that's gonna revolutionize some industry that's not what you have to do build something that you want that you think is cool add some fun things together built a little like build build like tinder for food like i would use that app wouldn't you use that app i'd use tinder for food i'd swipe on all these delicious dishes and then you match up with the recipes and then like you pass on the other ones like i don't know something something that's like ridiculous but fun build that don't build like okay well in the udemy we did this to to do and then we we did a a, a food app like a restaurant review like stop doing that build things that you want and then figure out how to do those things. So if you wanted to build uh, a food app with Tinder, okay, go look how Tinder is built and then go look at food apps and then figure out a way to combine those two. I don't, maybe it sounds maybe it sounds simple and I know it can be a little bit more difficult than that, but that's those are the kinds of projects you want to put on there. Things that you're interested in, things that because if you're interested in it, you're going to you're going to be focused on how you're building it and what you're building it with and you're going to be excited to talk about it in the interview because you're like, "Yeah, I know it's ridiculous, but check this out." Another good way to learn that I've found is when you learn something Try and teach it. If you don't have anyone to teach it to, just write it down and try to explain it again in your own words. 
and you'll see that you either have no idea what you're talking about, and you'll be like, so you just do this because, wait, hold on, why do you do this thing again? That happens to me a lot when I try to teach things. When I was teaching code for like the last two years, I was like, they would be like, hey, how do you do this? And I'd be like, well, you just take this and you copy and paste it here because, wait, hold on. That's a good question. Learn something and you teach something that's called the Feynman Technique. You, go, you can go watch Forrest Knight's video on that. He talked about that like a few days ago, but learn something, teach something, learn something, teach something. That is, in essence, the Feynman Technique. It can also benefit you in other areas of life. If you have the kind of no thank you, I'll do it myself attitude, learn it, teach it, learn it, teach it. Now you have skills to sell and now you can be an entrepreneur and this video wasn't about that, but like, I'm just saying like the I'll do it myself attitude and I'm gonna try to teach it to other people really refines your knowledge. Like you don't know it until you can teach it. And if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it. I understand that you guys are already drinking from a fire hose. And you're already like lost and, and probably asking yourself, why am I doing this? And when would I ever use this skill in reality? And I understand that it's gonna be boring. Even if you have a project, like if I wanna do game dev, I, I love game dev, but there are some parts in the game dev where I'm like, this is boring AF, I'm done with this. And that's part of it. And that, But that's also the reason why it's a difficult skill that people don't wanna do, you know, because that's, that's what supply and demand is. People, if there's not a lot of people that wanna do this boring, tedious thing, hey, you get more money for it. And so you have to understand that that's, you know, if it was easy, everyone would have it, and then it would have no value anymore. Anyways, uh, this is kind of a rant video. I hope it's been helpful. Hope you guys are crushing it today. Uh, help me get 100K subscribers. If you feel motivated, maybe leave a comment for the algorithm uh, or for the giveaway. Please don't demonetize me, YouTube. Thank you. Maybe leave a thumbs up if you don't want to do that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. That's a wrap. <laughs>